Hello and welcome to the Pico 8. If you haven't heard of it, it's essentially a fantasy Game Boy competitor. Basically it has uh, very limited rules and such to it that uh, make it difficult to program for. Uh, this, for instance, is uh, this is code, this is in Lua. It's a slightly modified form of Lua, so it has a couple shortcuts that Lua doesn't normally have. And uh, you see this down here on the bottom, right, where it says, and now it says token count. Basically, you're limited to a certain number of tokens. You uh, Line numbers are not limited. That just, that's just telling me where I am. Uh, there's a sprite editor thing. Um, yes, these are terrible. Just ignore these for the time being. Uh, they will be changed, of course. This is uh, a map system, so you can actually draw maps, although uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to use the map system actually, or at least I don't intend to. Uh, the part of the map is actually shared with the sprite sheet, so like you can either have four pages of sprites or two pages of sprites and two maps. Or you, So you, you have one map and two sprite sheets, or, or one section of map and two sprite sheets, um, or you can do four sprite sheets and just the the bottom half of the map it's 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 kind of a weird thing basically there's weird quirks to it all and then there's this uh music editor thing that i really don't understand but i made a little drum sound i'm hoping i can uh get some help from someone who is good with music because um what i would like to do with this is because it allows you to have a bunch of different samples and you can do different things with different samples i'd like to have um, I'd like to do something like actual No Man's Sky in that I'd like to have samples and different, you know, different samples and then play different combinations of samples depending on what you're doing at the moment in the game or whatever. Anyhow, right quick, I'm going to show you what this does right now. What this does right now is it just, uh, it generates, uh, it gener it's a procedurally generated galaxy and the way it is right this moment, if you run it, it will just, um, generate the names of of the s systems in the like first sector of the galaxy that you get to and it takes a while to generate um that is a problem that i can't really do anything about that's just kind of that's one of the limits of it that i've run into and so it just it takes a while and there you go there's the uh, list of names uh interesting um f finish making the list or is it done oh you know what there is an update loop so even though Let's let's go ahead and actually not D. Let's hit this button. Okay, so it should be generating another list right now. So again, give it a minute. Man, this certainly takes a while. I'm just gonna escape out of that because I'm tired of waiting on it. But anyhow, this bit of code at the very end is what was doing that. Now I've commented that out, and I'm going to uncomment out the draw function here, and we'll see what this should really look like. There we go. So uh, you can see we have orange, yellow, red, white, and blue stars. That gray number in the center is the memory usage. And I have that there because uh, one thing I found out by accident right away when I started um, adding more detail. Basically, originally this map was drawn every frame, generated and drawn every frame, which takes up a lot of processing power and overworks the CPU, at least the um, virtual CPU. It's It's not actually overworking the computer, but... Um, that means that I, I had to have this stuff like pre-generated. And so I decided rather than having like a free flowing map that you can move around, which would be very, very laggy and horrible, it's divided into pages. And so you hit an arrow to go between different pages. You can't tell which direction I'm hitting right now, but I'm hitting different directions on the keyboard and I'm going to different like sectors, I guess you could say. And uh, so you can see it's procedurally generated. So if I go left and then go back right and then left again, you'll see that it is the same stuff that was there because it is, like I said, procedurally generated. And um, each one of these systems has a name. Obviously, I'm not showing you the names on the screen right now just because I, the way it works right now, the way I have it, it's just, it's not, it's not there yet, but uh, it will be at some point. I'll, I'll have some sort of thing where it, it can show you the names of systems or whatever. I haven't worked out any details yet. I've literally just made the system to generate the galaxy and generate names, and that's all I've done so far. But I have this big old memory counter in the center because uh, I ran into a limitation right away of um, not being able to... Uh, not being able to actually have a full map screen. Um, so right here, this code right here generates the map. 
And the key part to look at that's different from how it should be, this right here, this plus 14 and this plus 113, what that should be is there should be nothing here and this should say plus 127. And what that would mean is that it's generating from 1 to 127, which now that I'm thinking about it, it sounds a bit backwards actually. No, no, from 0 to 127. I'm sorry. I I got confused for a moment because Lua, you start counting at 1, but in this case, you don't start counting at 1. <laughs> so it's, it's a little bit odd. Um, in any case, um, it would be from 0 to 127 to have 128 by 128 for the x and y axis, but I can't actually do that. So I decided to go with 100 by 100 and then this plus 14 and this plus 113 instead of it being 0 to 99 is so that it's drawn in the center of the screen instead of um instead of in the top left that way it's um it's less noticeable that it's actually wrong you know what i mean you you don't really notice unless you're paying close attention that these sectors aren't like full sized and the max memory that we're allowed to use in the pico 8 is 1024 megabytes and this number in the center is how many megabytes i'm using so you can see i'm running fairly close to that memory limit just with this um, so i'm going to leave it like this for now hopefully it'll be okay uh, if not i'll have to reduce it even further but um Fortunately, it, you don't have to reduce it by that much to reduce that, so it shouldn't be too much of a problem. In any case, I'm going to go back to the code and kind of show you how all this works. Um, so right here, local function name, you give an x, y, and then g stands for, basically this is the gener procedurally generated value based on the x, y coordinates for the type of star that's there, and p is for planets, which I haven't done yet. Uh, here we have a string of all the constants, here we have all the vowels. If we have a galaxy, if we're generating a system name, then we take the x, y, add them together, and then multiply that by g, and seed our random number generator with that. Else we just seed with x and y, and I'm just going to say that that's a surface item. I haven't gotten to that yet, but anything that's on the surface of a planet that needs to be named. Um, actually, this is going to be, um, I'm just going to change this to say uh, non non-celestial because this will be anything that is a name of a ship, name of a person, name of an animal, name of just about anything else will be just based on uh, x plus y, which um, which actually means that I'll, I'll need to change this later because I'll have to have uh, some sort of counter or something here to, um, in fact, I'll just go ahead and put that there, counter, and um, I guess what I'll do here is I'll say else if c, then... Um, SRAN blah 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 plus plus C uh, so if G else if that and then I need to add in a else SRAN of X plus Y and this will be um, what will that be what would that be that would be I don't think that's a thing I need to worry about actually I don't think that's a possibility. Um, I'm going to leave it in there for now, but it shouldn't be needed, so I'll remove it at some point in the future unless I end up needing it. So if it's a planet, um, basically the P would stand for which planet it is in the system. You know, is it the first, the second, or the third, or fourth, or whatever? Um, if it is a planet, then we go from zero to that number times two, and we throw out some random values. That way we can generate a different name for the planets than the system, because else this would just, it would just seed with the system um which is oh yeah this is system right here yeah yeah it would s no no this is system i'm sorry my brain went derp for a moment there else it would just seed with this and you'd get every planet in the system with the same name which we don't want obviously um s is our string uh we go from i to five random up to five plus two which basically means um it's going to be somewhere between two and seven characters long if a random number between uh zero and three is less than one then oh oh you know what that needs to be two no i'm gonna leave it because it's working pretty well so far then um l is the letter so uh the 21 is because there's 21 characters and the plus one is so that we start at one um this is for the consonants so you can see sub c l l this is essentially saying extract the lth letter from the c string and then concatenate it to s 
And then we do the same thing here, but with the vowels. So it's six instead of 21, and it's the vowels instead of the consonants. And then we return the string. So that's just the naming function. That's all that is. Okay, so the actual, so GXY is for galaxy. Uh, SYS is sys, that's uh, systems that are in the galaxy. Um, this function is only called to update the galaxy when you've like changed which sector. So it's like your currently selected sector. Oh yeah, right here, G, that's the galaxy. GX and GY are which sector you're in effectively. And um, what was I looking for? Okay, so system, local function noise. So this is the guts of the main thing, and this deserves its own video and topic all on its own right here. This long complex thing, R cosine, multiply, sine Y, and then there's a second cosine and sine, and then there's another cosine and sine down here. Lots of math there, and that is where the bulk of the generation of the system comes from. And uh, and then of course we, we want just the decimal part of that number, so we, we take out the um, whole part of it right here. And like I said, that deserves a whole other video. I'm just gonna skip it for now. Uh, then we come down here and this is that bit that I was talking about where we are not generating the full sector that we could be just because we have memory limits that prevent us from doing that. And uh, we call, oh yeah, this is, you notice its own little function within here. So we call noise with our X and Y values that we're going through. And uh, then, ooh, I just figured out a big part of my memory usage. I am keeping around a bunch of info that I do not need. So I'm going to say if S is greater than 0 0.994, which you'll notice is the same number down here. Um, yeah, it's the same number down there. Then we will add this to the system because else we're, we're doing a whole bunch of stuff that we don't need to do. And that is actually probably um, slowing it down significantly. Um, okay, so we add, we only add that if, if it exists. And then we say local Z is S. This is because I need to save the S value, the noise value, which I called S because it, it's, it initially stood for which star type you're getting so if it's uh, this one if it's above this number then it's a blue star if it's above this then it's a white yellow orange and red and uh, let's see where is okay noise that's add okay so it only adds it if it's there and then this bit down here also only needs to exist if that happens um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that whole chunk of code and I'm actually gonna put it down here so if the system, if the system is above 0.904, then we take all of this as well, and we put that in there. So we add, we add the X and Y coordinates of that system, the local screen coordinates of that system. Um, and then we add to that system in the third spot, the S, which is a color. These are, these are numbers that represent colors. And then we add a name generated on there using X, Y, and Z. Remember Z is the, uh, this S value before we modified it. Cause we just modify it here to the color value that we need. Yeah. So it's, it's a bit convoluted, but when you're working with this system, everything gets a bit convoluted. That's kind of how it goes. And, um, so yeah, I may be able to change this. In fact, I probably will be able to change this, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. I'm just going to do that down here. The update function, if we push, this is a left button. This is right. This is up and this is down. Then, um, left, we go left, right, blah, blah, blah. This is the same kind of thing you'll see anywhere. Um, just the main difference is that we go by a negative 128, which I could actually change this to a hundred since technically, um, our sectors are like smaller than that. I could actually change this. In fact, I could change, um, I could change the procedural dynamics of the whole thing, um, just by changing this number. I can actually change everything up a bit, um, which is interesting. I hadn't thought of that. I'm gonna leave it like this for now, but I could, and then, um, but I could do something about that. And then I regenerate the galaxy if I need to, uh, after any of these button presses. Uh, there's probably some way to optimize this or something. Uh, actually, no, there really isn't. Because by optimize, I mean reduce token count. But I can't think of any way to really do that. Because any any kind of trickery I do to remove the duplicated calls here is just going to make more duplicated calls and just more tokens used. 
So down here in the draw, CLS clears the screen. 4S in all G system. This is kind of like um, I pairs. If you're used to Lua, this is like I pairs, except we only have the value. So I'm getting all the values in G sys. And then PSET means set the pixel. And so the first position is the X, the second position is the Y, the third position is the color. And then down here, this is stat zero is memory usage, 5050 is where on the screen, and five is the color, which ends up being a gray. I did not choose this. I literally, I tried to print it without this and then it was printing in black so I couldn't see it. So I was like, oh, you know what? I should give that a color so I can see it. And then um, down here is where it actually starts. This is the initial, like basically everything else, it loads it in, reads all that. And um, hold on, I just realized something. No, I did not. Okay, I thought I, I thought I recognized an error, but I did not. And then clear and create a galaxy. And then this down here was my temporary printing thing, which um, by the way, I'm actually gonna, bring that back for a moment now that I've fixed um, part of the problem with it generating a ton of stuff that wasn't needed. Um, so I'm going to come down here and get rid of, ooh, <laughs> I made that a string for a moment there. All right, so uh, run and yeah, see how that's much quicker now? Am I generating another system? I should be generating another system. Well, in any case, much, much quicker. So that's nice. Um, let's go ahead and Oops, wrong buttons. Let's put that away and take this out. Oh yeah, that's how I do that. Yeah, uh, a little trick that I do for making it easier to uh, work with things when I need to comment out and re-comment large sections. I just put them in little sections like that. Just makes it easier to work with, really. And uh, yeah, so this is the Pico 8, and this is a game that I have started working on with it. That is a demake of No Man's Sky, because I've been playing No Man's Sky, and yeah, look at that. My memory usage is down to like 22. Good, this is much better. And also, you notice it generates the systems much faster. And it's because it's not having to, it's not saving a bunch of useless data, and then when it renders, it's not going through and trying to render a bunch of stuff that's not even there. Yes, much better. Much, much better. So... Uh, save MS. I think I already did that, but uh, in any case, I'm going to shut this down. Thanks for watching, and as always, I'll see you in space.